tight and ground anchors so good but I can't get them out come on baby oh my god oh I mean this is ridiculous to bury them out dig them out freezing Four, 42 the wind is brutal Welcome back to another video. So today I'm back in the Lake District and I'm going to be doing a hike and a wild camp up on the top of Nethermost Pike. Maybe going to Dolly Wagon as well. I'm going to do a camp and I say we because I'm not alone with my mate Dan who I met from a hiking group. <laughs> um, we've decided to come and do this today. There was some snow this early this morning. I don't think there's any on the tops and the weather's looking okay for tonight. <laughs> let's hope the wind's not too bad. Right, let's get cracking. So for this hike, we've started in Thirlmere and there's a church at the bottom. We've just parked in the car park there. It's £12 for 14 hours, but it's not working the machine, so we can't pay. We'll, we'll see if we can do a donation at the church tomorrow. We just chose this route randomly online. Just had a little look and I plotted it. <laughs> I think it's a steep one. So this is a good way to get yourself up. Hellvel in. Um, you know, if you don't want to do Stride and Edge or you want an alternative, if you do the one further back, you can, you know, you can tackle the Dodds and Rays and still get up to Hellvel as well. Depending on what time we get up here today, we might walk over to Hellvel and tag it anyway. But it's great to be back out again. This week, I'm here for five days over in the Lake District. So me and Danny are doing a hike and wild camp this evening. And then the next two days, I've got a first aid course in Keswick as part of my mountain leader training. So I've got that on Thursday and Friday. And then I'm running a guided hike up Cat Bells on the Saturday. Probably won't film that. In fact, I won't film that, but again, it's another, another day out in the lovely Lake District. The weather is nice now. It was pissing it down all the way here. But luckily, as we got to the lakes, it has cleared up. Winter pack. <laughs> No good. <laughs> yeah, pack's always a little bit heavy in the winter. I haven't bought my spikes today. I normally do bring them, but there isn't any snow or ice and there's none forecast. So I've saved the weight and left them in the car. My goggles as well, they're in the car. So we just noticed on the way up here, water source. So when we get a little bit, just a touch higher, we're gonna top up while we can, I think. <laughs> Danny's been carrying his all the way up here Two so far. Two and a half litres, we should have carried it. <laughs> Two and a half litres in his bag, so I'm going to top up here while we can. I don't want to make the same mistake if you watch my Hell of Ellen video where they got up there and they had no water and they had to go down to Red Tarn. I mean, made a bit of fun, but I don't want to be doing that. I've got a new bottle as well for carrying my water, which I'll, which I'll share with you. It links in really well with my Catadin B3. So I'll show you that when I'm topping up. Although I've not thought properly about it and I don't know when I get it, how I'm going to attach it to my bag and carry it. Right, so this is my new water bottle. It's tiny. Right, so this bag's always attached for putting it away. And basically, it's a two litre hydration pack. And if you probably notice, I have the Catadin B3 filter. It's the same material. And the best thing about this, this cap, accepts the Catadin B3 top. I'm just gonna fill this up with water, I don't need to filter it, and then later, when I'm ready to drink it, I just put that filter straight onto there. So I'm gonna fill, mm, definitely gonna fill this one, I don't know want to carry all this, but I'm gonna fill this up now. But now I just scoop it up, and I don't have to worry about filtering it, which is great, I'll do it later. Woohoo! -hoo! Nearly fell in, bastard. It's close enough, isn't it? And this thing as well, it has all hoops on the thing, so you can hook things on and tie it to your bag. But I haven't done that. I didn't think ahead, so I need to work out how I'm going to attach this to my bag now. Probably on top. So, hopefully, all being well. Works alright, doesn't it? And do you know what? You could probably drink this water straight off. It's absolutely freezing. But yeah, there we go. Whew. 
we're still ascending. I've not done that much filming up here. Let me turn you this way. I've not done that much filming up here because it's really windy. So I know the audio is not going to be great. I have brought my microphone, but I don't want to put it on yet because you'll only hear me, you won't hear us both. So I'll put that on later, but yeah, starting. It's a very cold, cold wind now, isn't it? <laughs> and it's just a slog, it's just steps. So we're just following this up. And I think we're going kind of up this way. It was getting windy, I was just about to put my wrap thing on and realised when I filled my water up, I must have left it. Arr. So I'll have to order another one. Luckily I've still got a hat in my bag somewhere. Um, oh by the way I found my hat, it was in the back of my bag. So last time I came out I forgot this sky watch. So today, when we, if we do get winds later, we'll know exactly what they are and the temperature. 24.2 so far, and my hands are freezing. 42. So I've had to put my hat on, it looks like a nipple on my head, but I've had to put my hat on. I've put this back on, keep it nice and warm. Actually here I've only got a heat warmer, it's very thin top on, and a little uh, Under Armour t-shirt. This is super thin, but I'm warm. Rad Borealis, honestly, I really recommend it. How are you, all right? Yeah, yeah, loads of layers. Just the, uh, that wind is gonna take half of my face off of it, so. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just gonna- Keep moving. Keep moving, get to the top of here. We should level off soon. This wind was supposed to be going, but it's still here, strong at the moment. <laughs> Beautiful views though. And as tough as it is, it's great to be out. We were just saying before, whether you can hear us or not, I don't know. If you can't hear me, I'll cut this, but we were just saying it's really hard to get out at times. And Danny struggled a little bit like me, so it was good that we both committed to coming today. Yeah, like you said there, hopefully you can hear him, but you, just, you know, someone to get you out the door. Commit to going with somebody else, like I said in the video a while ago. And it's great. We'll enjoy it anyway. And if it is brutal winds, we'll find somewhere a bit more sheltered. But it should die down later. Should. <laughs> the wind is brutal. I've just put my gloves on because I'm freezing. And I know this isn't on properly, but oh, this wind was supposed to be clearing it. Midday. I don't know what time it is now, but Woo. so we're just getting to the top in a little bit of a plateau where if we turn left, it's up to Helvellyn, and right is nethermost. We've just got to the little point now where we can make a decision. We've decided we're gonna get, we are gonna go up there and take a look because nethermost pike isn't far, so we might as well go up there first. We should get some nice views over this side as well, hopefully. And nethermost is behind us somewhere. Still little bits of snow up here. Let's just have a look, little look over the edge. Oh, here we go. Wow, awesome. Look at the views. I must admit, I've never seen Striding Edge from this side before. No, it's incredible, it's incredible isn't, it? isn't it? We've been over Striding Edge so many times. Do you know what, with this close and we're early anyway, so we might as well head up over to here, up to the top of Helvellyn again, have a little mooch, have a little sit in the shelter if it's a bit warmer, have a snack. We're just arriving to the summit of Helvellyn. Just over here, literally just in the middle there is where I camped with Kay. On that other video. Oh, we get a little bit of shelter here. Get a little bit of a drink and a snack. So the cairn's just a little bit further on.
and there you go red time still got a little bit of snow and we've got a swirl edge oh that's why i had to go down to get my water last time yeah so i'm gonna get my sit pad out so i don't get a cold ass we're gonna have a nice little sit down here and let's get a snack and i'll bring you back so i've got my sit pad oh my sleeping pad so i'll get a nice warm bum i'm gonna get a little snack and I'm going to get my down jacket on <laughs> while we're sat here. I brought two down jackets today. I've got an orange one and a blue one. So we're going to go for the blue one. <laughs> Have a look at that. Is it, but is it warm enough to have on your own, Chris, even though you said you brought two? Yeah, yeah. Is it really? Yeah, really warm. Looks that it's really, really thin. So, so this jacket I got, I've got bought this from Cotswold Outdoors from a while ago. Oh no. No, I didn't. I got it online. And this jacket's worth about, it's about 250 quid, but I didn't pay that. I got it for about, I really can't remember. I think, I feel like I paid 100 quid for it. Really good. It's super, super warm. And it's, I think it's called the, I don't know if it's called the Mythic Alpine Light. And they do a Mythic Alpine. Mine's the one with the black sleeves. So it's a, a touch lighter, but it is super, super warm. What's it called? Mythic Alpine Light Jacket. Yeah, Mythic, and they do a Mythic Alpine as well, which is a little bit more expensive. This jacket here I've got as well. This is my blue one. I've had this from, it's my very first down jacket. And this is a Simmons uh, from Decathlon. I don't think they do this one anymore. Again, this is another down jacket, super warm. Still orange as well. Still rocking the brand colors, but blue and orange. This is another really warm jacket. So I brought two today, just because I haven't brought a jumper. Is that the night coat? See, I've heard mixed reviews about these night coat. Is this the 10,000 one? I've got two of them. It's 150 grams. Some of my sort of language. <laughs> I've heard mixed reviews on them. <laughs> just showing. We're, we're just having a talk up here about Can being we? light and ultra light. If you've not seen Andy's video from Backpacking UK, check out his recent video and he's, he has a bit of a rant and a talk about light and ultra light. Now, Danny. Danny's a bit of an ultra light. He likes to be ultra lightweight. <laughs> I'm not, but where I can save weight, I will. But I don't mind the extra weight. But we were just talking about some saving weight. So this here, this pa this power bank, I bought them ages ago, and I've got two of them. And this is the Nightcore NB10,000, super lightweight. 150 grams. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he already knows. But carbon, um, yeah, really nice. I normally only bring one, but I had a spare one in the car. Danny said before, he said, oh yeah, you know, it'll just sap your battery this cold and I've thrown two in, so <laughs> I've got two. But I do like to charge all my gear. I've got, I've actually got four batteries for this camera today. I'm filming on the DJI Action 4, for those who asked. People are asking what my filming gear is. I normally have my DJI mic as well. I've got the mic two. I've actually got the mic one as well. I've got a feeling I forgot it. I've left it in the car or I've lost it. One of those options. So I'll have to have a little look later. But I don't always like to use that when I'm with somebody because you can't hear them as well. I've only got one of them. So hopefully the wind's going to be okay. You're going to be able to hear this, but we'll see. But for now, I'm just having a southern fried chicken sandwich. And I've got a couple of dehydrated meals for later. Nothing fancy. I'm not cooking. Can't be asked carrying my pan. <laughs> <laughs> dehydrated meal. Yeah. 100 millilitres of water. Job done. Yeah, water will do. I've got three litres of water, so should be good. Plenty of brews. Still. So what we're going to do, we're going to head over to Nethermost Pike. And then we're going to assess what's going on. The wind will drop at six o'clock tonight. Well, that's six o'clock, so we've got to get till six o'clock. So we're going to see what the wind's saying. It's not looking great at the moment. So once we've tagged the pike, if we can find a sheltered place, great. If not, we may even drop down to Grisdale Town. We're going to have a look. We don't necessarily have to camp on top of here, but we'd like to. So we'll see. Safety first, but you know, we're risk takers as well. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. It's just, there's, there's not a lot of shelter here. It's not ideal. And although our tents will handle it, we want to get somewhere with a little bit of shelter. But I'm happy pitching up early as well. There's not many, well, I've not seen anyone now. I saw some people before, but there's no one around now. probably hear the wind still blowing I don't know if this is a summit here because there's, there's a few summit cairns to mark the way it's 
a great spot to pitch your tent as in flat way way too exposed and rocky as you can see on there nethermost pike 891 meters the wind's still blowing but a little bit better it's yeah, getting it's there view of Helvel in behind cat sty cam but yeah this is the uh the summit of nethermost pike here i would say what an uneventful summit <laughs> bland bland yeah just very very flat but oh the wind's just stopped all of a sudden there we go let's touch the summit boom it's quite a rocky top but i'm sure you would get pegs in here as well if you had to but we could do with being somewhere a little bit more sheltered if we can let's have a little look a little look over the edge got a little bit of snow on the cornice here look at this striding edge cat's die cam and obviously hell belly what we've just come down a little bit rocky i'll just show you now in case you were to come up here yourself it's very flat but you've got to be careful because i bet it's very hard to get pegs in I don't know when the camera fell over but I didn't bring my Delta ground pegs but I've managed to get some of the Titan ground pegs so I'm going to use these on this side get them in there and then not coming out these have got brilliant holding power they're very hard to get hold of I've, I've been after these for about a year and a half since i first saw them advertised and he put a post on the other day saying they've got four available so i bought them i do want six one for each guy line but much lighter than um, delta ground peg so titanium ground anchors but if you see the tent's taking a bit of deflection but once we take this tighten this off I don't know. Not too bad. So I've got my titanium ground anchors in, and you can probably see I've put an extra couple of pegs in just to keep them down because this is where the wind's taking effect. Same here as well. These these aren't going to budge, but again, I've got another peg in. So I'll just open up. Oh. And let's get everything in the tent. So I'm going to get my gear in. Let's get squared away. And then I'll bring you back. Woo! So we'll start from the bottom up. This is my, it's like a thermo rest, but it's a, it's a wide sea pad. This will go under me tonight for a little bit of extra warmth. Underneath that, we've got the thermo rest X-Therm. I always bring that, love it. Then I've got the Leviathan EV900. A few people have asked about the pillow. It's an X-Bed mega pillow really like it it's massive folds up quite small really comfy i've got my down jacket that you saw early on the top of Helvellyn. adventure foods pasta bolognese and i've also brought this one i've had this in the cupboard for ages minced beef hot pot cut kit is my normal 750 mil titanium pot windmaster stove <laughs> thank you for everyone who corrected me in my last video it's not called a wind burner I know it's not. Um, I think it's because I've been watching so many videos lately comparing the MSR wind burner with something else that was in my head, but I know it's the Windmaster, so I brought that. And this is my GSI cup, and I've got some coffees in there as well. Okay, so I'm going to muller the name. Would you say QU? 
It's a really unusual tent and it really does look like a ram's head. It's absolutely solid, it's double doors. It looks quite low and small, but if you look in here, really good vestibule size. And it is massive. You can easily get two people on here. You've got four massive pockets. In fact, you've got them at the other side as well. It's got his little washing line at the top, double doors. Looks really good. Look at the flow rate on this Katadin. Brilliant. And my little spoon. Little Licks Harder spoon. If you ever want one of these little spoons, AliExpress. I think I paid £3 for it. looking good nice and taut all ready for tonight I've been in there it's been lovely and warm sliding about a little bit in here I must admit I'm on a little bit of a slope but it's all good oh I'm nice and toasty in the tent I've got my heat warmers top my hood on my hat on got a bit of everything on now just keeping it warm but I've still got the doors open to the tent and it's uh, just listening to the wind just check my sky watch and I'll show you put a clip in now but we've had temperatures down as minus six minus eight I think it was at times that's a wind chill the actual temperature if I just check it now yeah in the wind chill now get minus 7.5 and let's just check the actual temperature minus 1.1 and there's not a lot of wind it's only like eight mile an hour winds so only only low but it's nice and nice and toasty and warm rang the missus to let her know I'm all right. But I've not got very good reception here. You can hear the winds picking up a little bit, tent flapping. I don't think it's going to be anything like my last camp, thankfully. I'll bring you back when I've got some food and we'll get it nice and warm. Right, since my last time I was filming, just been chilling, it's seven o'clock and now it's time to have my food. It's been in my jacket for ages, so it was probably ready about 15 minutes ago but it's just nice to get as much warm as you can out of it now this is definitely got too much water in it it's like baby food this has been in my cupboard for so long i just didn't want it so i prefer the pasta bolognese but yeah i'm gonna have this and then if i'm hungry later i've still got a pasta bolognese to look forward to but i should be all right the way i describe this it's like smash mixed with a cup of soup but yeah, it's all right. And I'm probably not going to do much more filming tonight. I'm going to have a nice relax. It's a long night in the tent. Bring you back like last time. If the tent goes crazy, but hopefully it's a nice chilled evening. Well, good night. And I'll see you in the morning. Good morning YouTube, welcome to the mar to the summit of Nethermost Pike. The tent from last night did really well, all the pegs all good. Glad to say I did not have to get up out of my tent in the night and that's thanks to having the piss bottle, it's great. In fact once I got out just to empty it. So we've got Dolly Wagon Pike where we're going to head this morning and it's absolutely beautiful. There's already people on the summit of Helvellyn up there see somebody just on the on the crest as well they've probably just come up striding edge and we're going to get a sunrise just over there but it's fantastic look at all the mountains it's looking beautiful today it's going to be a cold one but it's going to be nice and there's danny so yeah no drama in the night it's all good i'm kind of mostly packed away in my tent i've just left my things out so i can make a brew so I think what I'll do, I'll set my other camera up and I think I'll just leave it and we'll try and get a little bit of a, see if we can get a time lapse of the, uh, of the sunrise. There was ice on the tent, but I can't see anything on it now. Yeah, it's looking absolutely clear. A little bit of ice at the door. But yeah, you'd probably say like all this, this is what we're saying about all the feathers. 
but I've put most things away. There's my piss bottle <laughs> and my stove. So I'm just going to make a quick brew and then I'll bring you back. Right, I've made my brew. That's just down there. I couldn't get a boil on this morning, even with a Windmaster. I think my gas, even though my gas had kept it in my sleeping bag, because it's been out here for a little bit this morning, it's freezing. My gas was freezing a little bit on the outside and it just wasn't very, uh, it just wasn't very strong, but I saw a few bubbles and that's all you need for coffee. It just shouldn't be boiling anyway. Just look at all the layers of the clouds. Literally all round amazing tops. Now's the job of taking the tent down. But you can see yesterday, Oh, I mean, these are these are jammed in. It's always hard getting your, your first peg out. You've got to find your loosest peg. There we go. And then once that's out, I think I showed this last time, I just tuck them on. I just tuck them on and pull, pull all the rest out. So I'm going to go around and take all the big ones out so they're together. And again, what I tend to do, put it on again, pull it out. And then I leave them hooked on. Put it on again, like knitting, like knitting needles. That one, and another one. What I can't get out, and what I don't know how you get out, is these, uh, is these ground anchors. Titan ground anchors, amazing. So good, but I can't get them out. Oh, wow. Oh, there they are. I'll tell you what, they are jammed in. I think what I need to do is put a little bit of paracord on the top there so I can get them out in future. But I'm going to try and show you getting this one out. It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, they're stuck in to bury them out, dig them out. If people worry about the holding power of these, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna bend up bending the peg here, but gotta get them out. Come on, baby. Oh my God. Oh, I need to definitely put some paracord on these. They're going to be all misshaped, this when I get it out. Get in there. Come on, baby. Oh, I mean, this is ridiculous. Yes! Wowzers! Right, I'm not going to film all this. I'm going to have about an half an hour video, but... Fucking hell. If you're worried about them holding, there's no worries of that. Getting them out is a nightmare. So I think in the future, I'm gonna to have to leave some really long power cord, paracord on. I'm gonna tie it to a few different places so I can really get a pull on them to get them out. But Right, I've got one more to get out, and then let's get it away. 9.02, all packed away. I've had my brew. As you can see here, just a little bit of ice. And what do we see? Gleave no trace. <laughs> I just said to Danny, as I was going over, I said, oh, I've just got to, just want to film the empty bit here, I said, you know what I'm going to say now, he said, I've been waiting for this all the time, gleave no trace. <laughs> you can see the dark patch where we were, and that was a little bit of ice from the tent. If you haven't come up here before, Nethermost Pike, it's a great one to do. It's not one where you come and say, oh, it's a beautiful summit, because it's not, it's flat. It's like a, a flat mound, but the views from here are incredible. From striding edge, and just, just look, just look around, look at all the layers of all the mountains as far as you can see. And say in between Dollywagon Pike and the, and the Cairn, I think that's Ennerdale Water in the distance there. We've obviously got the mountains over there. And now we're going to head over to Dollywagon Pike, check off our second way, right? Whether we drop down to Grisdale and come back from there, if we do Grisdale Seat see Sandal, we're not too sure. We'll just have a look when we're down there. We can always do that another time. So I'll take you with us and I'll show you uh, a few sites on the way back. And there's over the other side. Not as glorious over the other side because it's... Uh, some little darker clouds and stuff but just look at the landscape this is what we do it for so i know some people who watch my channel I, I know some people like watching the videos because you don't go winter camping yourselves but you don't really need you know the perfect gear as long as you've got a tent you're happy with you can even get a cheaper tent things like a, a little oex fox 2 and things like that and what i mean by those is they're very low tent so they're good in wind 
if you've got a bit of a tent, you've got a good sleeping mat, you can do this yourself. Come with somebody else who knows what they're doing. Make sure you've got some spare gear, some warm clothes. You know, I've seen see people take a hot water bottle. This is when you get the views like this, you see. Often in winter, you tend to get clear skies as well because it's so cold. A lot of the time I've had my best weather, icy in the morning. So it's blue, clear blue skies. I've had the best views. So where we're heading now, we're just up to this next cairn, High Crag. So this isn't a Wainwright, but it's still another little summit over here. Again, I always mention in my videos, but if you want a copy of this route, head over to Strava. By all means, follow me on there. Every time I do a hike, I post it. If you go on Strava on the web, the website view and log in, you can actually download the route as well. You just click the three dots and click download GPX. Once you get that file, you can open that in an app of your choice. I obviously have Garmin, I have a Garmin watch. There's OS maps, you can load it into anything and then you can follow the route yourself. You'll also see, I always plot way into camp and the way out of camp. So if you're clever and you have a look, you'll find out where I camp as well. So give you some ideas if you're struggling. This here would be a great place to pitch as well. It's obviously lower than these, but look at the view you'd get in the morning. In fact, the sun sets over here, so you get the, uh, oh no, the sun rises over here, but this is a, the ground's not too bad. It's not, it's a little bit slanted, but that there, if you're looking for a little bit of a pitching spot, there. Okay, no messing around. Let's get up there, along the ridge and up there. Got a little clamber up here. What a morning. Views. And here we go. This, this is a summit of Dolly Wagon Pike at 858 meters. Great views, cats to cam in the middle there. That's another one I need to camp on. I've been up there loads of times, but need to camp on it. Beautiful weather. And as we speak currently, we've decided that we're, we're gonna go up to Seat Sandal. It looks like a bit of a steep ascent, but we're hoping to get down and then we've got that awful climb up to Seat Sandal, but we both need that one as part of our Wayne rights. But just coming into view now is another great place for a camp, and that's Grisdale Town. We're just still descending now. I just thought I'd show you the descent down here. A little bit slippy, just gotta be careful with your footing. Gotta come all the way down to the bottom, looks a little bit boggy. And then we've got this steep, steep climb up there. We were just baiting, we either leave our bags at the bottom and go up and come down but we'll have a look how steep it is when we get there because there is a path all the way around the, alongside the beck, but we'll see. I know there is a path off the top because it does, does, I have plotted that on OS maps. Right, we're at the foot of Seat Sandal now. It's a bit steep going up and you can see what we've come down though. It's definitely steeper there. So it's either we go up with our bags and then find our way off the other side or we leave our bags here, summit and come down the same way. Put this in one of my hands, one hand, and yeah. pick your hand. Okay then. Please be an out and back, please be an out and back. I'm going to be picking for us to keep our bags on and go up to the top and work our way down the other side. If I'm wrong, we leave our bags, hike up, hike down. Are you ready? Yeah. So turn around, I'm not going to look. So I'm going to say to this one here. Winner! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Can't so wait for you to say swine. Right, so yeah, we'll chuck our bags down. It's gonna be a little bit easier. Let, get up and get down, because there's actually a, a bit of a nice path coming down here, down the, down the lake. Oh, why did I do that? Right, ditch our bags, and I'll see you halfway up there. Let's just get this done. Hold the jet going past. Just turn my camera on in time. There we go, get it on the, cam on the iPhone.
<laughs> right, let's get up here. <sighs> Look in the distance. Rain or clad coming in. We've still got a little bit to go yet. It's a bit of a false summit, this. It's a steep one. Dare I say Danny was right, better without the bags. I think this is a summit here. There we go. Seat sandal. This is the third way I'm right. 736 metres. This here is the Fairfield horseshoe. Fairfield at the top. And you've got St. Sunday Crag in the distance. Oh, it's deafening. Yeah, it's absolutely deafening when they go overhead. Right, do you know what? We need to hurry up and get down because all that clack's coming in. Yeah. Time for a quick picture and then let's get down before we get caught in the shit. Trying to get down without falling but fighting the clag. Certainly easier coming down than going up. Apologise, my nose is just leaking. It's cold. When we get down here, I've still got my Revolution racing on. Oh, I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to de-layer so I'm cool and then I can put my waterproof jacket on because I think we are going to get caught in a little bit of cloud, rain, clag, something like that. We'll see. That's us now. We've just said we've done it in plenty of time. But if you look just ahead of us, you can see the haze just ahead and we've just felt a couple of little speckles. We're going to follow this track down the beck I think it is, and try and work out our way back. We're off the map now because we were due to go originally over the top. So we'll make our way down, we'll show you, we'll keep filming because we're probably gonna get in the clag. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but we've got snow. So we've got our jackets on, we're all prepared for it, which is good, and we're on our way down just following this bet. But yeah, snow's coming in. We've had a bit of sun, we've had a bit of clag, we've had strong winds, we've had no winds. Beautiful. If you've come this far into the video and you've enjoyed it, just want to say, please do leave a like. It just shows YouTube that you enjoyed the video and they'll help more people see it. Uh, and if you are quite new to the channel and you've come here for the wild camps, I do hiking and wild camping, so I do a lot of day hikes, long distance hikes, which will be starting more towards April and May and I like to do hikes and wild camps as well, so it's a mixture. And what I'm going to say is, as you can see, the road's down there to the bottom and that's where we're heading towards. What I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this one early. I'm going to say thanks for watching the video. This was Danny. I'll give a link to if he's got any socials and things below. Subscribe to Chris's channel. <laughs> he also does walking groups. You're welcome to join. So I'll leave a link to my Hike with Chris group as well. It's called Hike with Chris because it's just an opportunity if you want to come out and hike with me. Maybe I'm doing long distance hiking you want to trek on, or I do also lead small groups as well. So we've got one on Cat Bells this week. I only know Danny from doing a local Rivington Pike Walk and he joined on, so. Best thing I've ever done. Social and, interaction and yeah, sort of yeah. getting out there for sure. I was somebody who wasn't really mad into groups at first, but I realized that everyone's got their own reasons where they don't want to plan their own hike, they like the company. But for me, it's about meeting new people and then when you want to go on your adventures, you've got people to do it with. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.